Okay, good. Uh, good afternoon. Let us start our lecture today. So uh, today we're gonna uh, continue our discussion last time um, on the um, uh, solution of elliptic equation, right? <clears throat> so in the previous class we discussed this um, uh, equation. <clears throat> This is equal to fx for all of the x in 0, 1. Um, and then we, uh, we also, um, we also, uh, we also um, <clears throat> have the boundary condition u0 and u1, they're both 0. All right, so in this case, in this case, um, <clears throat> Uh, to solve this equation, we're going to use uh, one second. So to solve this equation, we're going to use um, uh, the, uh, the Laxman Graham theorem as well. So, so, so what I do is that I multiply both sides of the equation with V and integrate from zero to one, right? So V is anything, any function, which is uh, so this is the weak form. So you multiply both sides of the equation with uh, function vx and you integrate. And this is equal to the integral from zero to one of fx, vx, and v will be in h zero one. All right. <clears throat> so this is the, uh, uh, the, the, the weak form uh, that we have. The space is still h zero one. Um, so, so this is the weak form. And our goal is to solve uh, this equation. Uh, first, we have to show that there is a unique solution, right? And after that, to uh, by Lux-Mean gram. And then we're gonna approximate this solution using finite um, element method. All right. So, uh, so we uh, to show. To show that there is a unique solution using the uh, 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 using the Lux-Mean gram theorem, we're gonna consider the bilinear form, right? So this is the bilinear form, and this is the L, the linear operator, right? So now for the bilinear form, what you need is that the bilinear form has a coercivity property, right? So you're gonna need that uh, PUU is going to be greater than or equal to alpha uh, uh, h zero one, all right? So now, um, so this guy, when I integrate by part, this will become u prime x, v prime x, right? So this is a computation that we did in the previous class. Um, um, normally, you have to transform this into this form so that uh, you can use h01, all right? So now, b u u will be, you're going to replace v by u. So here, you have u prime square plus the integral from 0 to 1 of sine s x over 4. Then this is v, uh, u, u prime u, all right? And next time you have, uh, the next one you have u square. This is a bilinear form. And what I want to show is that this is bigger than <clears throat> alpha the integral from zero to one of u prime square dx, which is the s zero one now of u, all right? So I want to show that this is, uh, so this is coercivity, right? I don't have to check a bilinear form. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, check that this is a bilinear form because, of course, this is a bilinear form. But I want to check um, the coercivity. So the coercivity say that the BU norm is going to be bigger um, than alpha times the H zero one norm. Uh, so I want to replace V by U. So BU U will be the integral from zero to one of um, u prime square, so so alpha h one norm will become this guy. Um, the second term will become sine of x over four of u prime u, um, integral from zero to one of u square, is going to be bigger than the other guy. All right. So I don't know what is the number alpha here, but I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna put this onto the, the left hand side, right? So I have one minus alpha. The integral from zero to one of u prime square, right? So I'm gonna put 
this to the left hand side, right? So because this term and this term, they're the same. This term and this term, they are the same. So I can put alpha to the left hand side. So when I put the alpha to the left hand side, what I have is one minus alpha, integral from zero to one um, of u prime square, plus integral from zero to one of u square, and this is bigger than or equal to the integral from zero to one of sinus of x over four, u prime u, right? <clears throat> okay, so sorry, plus, and this is bigger than zero, all right? I explain again. So on the left hand side, I have three terms. I put the term on the right hand side to the left hand side, and I have one minus alpha the integral from zero to one of u prime square. So this guy will be the integral from zero to one of u square. This guy is the same, right? Now, the next step is that I'm gonna throw this guy to the right hand side, all right? I'm gonna throw this guy to the right hand side. So I'm gonna have one minus alpha, the integral from zero to one of u prime square plus the integral from u to one of u square is bigger than or equal to zero to one minus sinus of x over four u prime u, right? It's clear? Um, I, I explain again, right? So from, right? So the key idea here is to show the coercivity, all right? To show the coercivity, what I got, what I gonna do is to show that B U is going to be bigger than alpha times the norm of U in H zero one. All right, so so I gonna have the integral from zero one of U prime square plus the integral from zero one of sinus x over four times U prime U um, plus the integral from zero one uh, U square uh, is greater than or equal to the integral from zero to one of U prime square dx. Right, so I see that okay on the right hand side. I have this term and on the left, I also have this term, right? So I know that, okay, for sure alpha has to be smaller than one. So I, I throw this guy here, so I have one minus alpha the integral from zero to one of u prime square. Here I have what? I have the integral from zero to one of u square, which is, I, I haven't touched this guy. So the guy that I want is this one. I put it here again. So I throw it to the left hand side. So I have one minus alpha the integral from zero to one u square plus integral from zero to one of u square, and then this is bigger than the minus guy, right? So, so now to show coactivity, we need to show, okay, so you have one minus alpha, integral from zero to one of u prime square, plus integral from zero to one of u square, and they're bigger than minus sinus of x over four, U prime U, all right? Right, so this is something that we need to, to prove. All right, so uh, who has an idea of how to prove this inequality? So, okay, so let us try to bow the, the right-hand side first. So this guy is definitely smaller than uh, the absolute value of, of the integral, right? And I want to get rid of the sinus. How can I get rid of the sinus? How can I bow sinus? Sinus is smaller than what? No? One. One, yes. So this is smaller than one according to Molly, right? And this is correct. So so then I have this guy is going to be smaller than u prime u, and this is smaller than integral from zero to one of the absolute value of sinus of x over four times absolute value of u prime times the absolute value. This is smaller than one, meaning that this is smaller than one fourth. Integral from zero to one, u prime u. All right, I explain again. So I look into the right hand side. I have a minus here. I don't care. I don't care the minus because I gone about that by the absolute value. So um, 
So I'm gonna bow this guy. Why is it so? I'm gonna bow this minus guy by the uh, by this guy uh, by the absolute value, and the sinus I'm gonna bow it by one. So so this guy is smaller than this guy. This guy is going to be smaller than integral of the um, the uh, the absolute value. Right, so the integral of the absolute value have the sinus, so I bought the sinus by one. So finally, I want, I want, um, I have this guy smaller than one fourth of the integral from zero to one of u prime u. All right. So now, now I'm gonna continue. So we will need to show. Okay, so I I Q the sinus, which is uh, trivial thing, but it's it's look the problem simpler. The problem looks simpler, right? So this is going to be bigger than one half, one third of u prime u, all right? So after, uh, after, uh, uh, after I have bow sinus by one, I have uh, an inequality which look um, simpler, which is one minus alpha integral from zero to one of u prime plus the integral from zero to one of u square is bigger than one third of the integral from zero to one of u prime u, right? So how can I bow this guy? So the left hand, the right hand side, I have only one way to, to bow it. What is it? So, so this right hand side, right? So this guy, I have only one way to bow this guy. What is it? Hold on. Hold on, yes. So according to Surab, so, um, so Surab idea is to bow the, the, the right hand side by holder. And this is a perfect idea because this is the only tool that we have now. So, so holder inequality, so, so whole inequality um, allows us to to bow this guy by u prime square one half integral from zero to one of u square one half. All right. So this is whole inequality. So so when you have a product like this, the only way you bow it is whole inequality. So the integral from zero one zero to one of u prime u is going to be smaller than L two norm of u prime times L two norm of u. Right, so this is one fourth u prime l two u l two, right? And the left hand side. So then we need to show one half u prime l two square plus u l two square is bigger than or equal to one fourth u prime l two u l two. Right, so this is something that we need to, to prove and this is simple. Um, so how can I choose alpha? Using Sobolev in um, admitting you can say that norm of uh, u prime is. Um, you don't need uh, Sobolev embedding, this is simpler than that. This is, this is very simple. So you choose one alpha and then you, you are done. So what inequality that we are using? We will use. And we don't need Sobolev embedding, right? So here is it simpler than Sobolev embedding. What is it? What is the missing inequality, which is simple? The simplest thing that you can you know for inequality. What is the simplest inequality that you know in your life? We just convert it into a square. Sorry? Do you want to, con can, do we just convert this into a square? Right, right. So Surab idea is perfect, right? So, okay. So here I have what? I have this is u prime L2. This is bigger than this guy. So Surab idea is, uh, is the square inequality or the so-called Cauchy inequality. Inequality. 
So what is the Cauchy inequality? The Cauchy inequality said that a squared plus b squared over two is bigger than ab, right? So this is the simplest inequality in, in your life, right? Um, and, 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 um, two, no, this is three. Um, so, so the Cauchy inequality says that if you have two real numbers, a and b, then a squared plus b squared is going to be bigger than a, b. Yeah. So this is equivalent with a minus b, square is positive, all right? So now, if I pick alpha to be one half, so what happened? So I have one half of u prime square L square plus u L square. And this is bigger than, of course, one half of u prime square L square plus u square, right? Okay, and this is bigger than uh, u prime square L square uh, u. And this is bigger than one fourth of u prime L square u L square, right? So, um, so this is an easy inequality. I explain it again. So the final goal that I want to show is that one minute out. One, yes. So leaves. So this is uh, I didn't see. So and then this is Liu, idea as well. So so uh, so so in um, in in this um, context, I have. 1 minus alpha u prime l square plus u l square. And this is bigger than or equal to 1 half of u prime l2 u l2, right? So according to Surav and Liu, um, you use Cauchy inequality. So Cauchy inequality said that, okay, a square plus b square is bigger than or equal to ab, right? So now I can choose alpha to be 1 half. So when I have alpha is 1 half, I have 1 half of u prime square norm l2 u the norm l2 square. And this is bigger than one half of L2 norm of u prime square plus L2 norm of u. So I apply um, Cauchy inequality. This is a, a square and this is b square. So this is ab, right? So of course I have uh, u prime L2, u L2, and this is bigger than one fourth u prime L2, u L2. So basically, basically what we have is the following. What we have is b u u, is bigger than alpha u as zero one, all right? Uh, and alpha here is one half. So we have coercivity. So besides coercivity, what do we need to use uh, to use uh, lax mean gram? What is the second important thing for for b that we need to check? Right. So second thing that we check b u v. What is it? So I want to use lax mean gram. I check that b u u is bigger than one half of u s zero one half uh, s zero one. So this is coercivity. What is the next uh, criteria that we, we we need to to know from lax mean gram? Boundedness. Boundedness. Yes. So according to Molly, this is boundedness, right? So this is perfect. So this is according to Molly, right? So, so the next thing we have to prove is, is about in this, right? Okay, so in this guy, in this B, you have three things. So the first thing is that you have this guy. The second thing you have this guy. And next thing you have this guy, right? So, so in this guy, uh, in the whole, the whole um, bilinear form, I have the first term, I have the second term and the third term. So the, the first and the last one, we bought it, them already in the previous class. In the previous class, class is, you have what? You have this is smaller than u in H01 v in h01 right so in, so this is what we, we check every time in the previous class so in the previous class we know that the integral from zero to one of u prime v prime is going to be smaller than the norm of u in h01 times the norm of v in h01 right so now uh so now i have uv 
and this is smaller than u um, s01 times v norm in s01. This is all what we, we check as well, right? So those things are checked. So the, the last one is we need to check. This is smaller than u for some constant, right? V is the one. All right, so I explain again. Uh, in the previous class, you, you have, um, B is a, lin is a combination of three terms. So the first term is the integral from zero one of u uh, prime V prime. This is bounded from the previous class by Holder, right? Uh, so the second term that we bound is the integral from just one of uv. So this is holder and superlap embedding. All right. So this was done already. Um, so the last thing that I have to check is is that um, the integral from just one of sinus of x um, over for u prime is is smaller than c times u s zero one v s zero one. And this, if this is done. Then we are done. We can use um, a, a lax mean gram, and then from the lax mean gram, we can do final element method, right? So number four. So checking. So now sub x over four u prime v smaller than c times u s zero one. Right, so this is what we uh, uh, um, this is well, this is what we um, we have to prove. We have to prove that the integral from zero to one of sinus x over four u prime v is going to be smaller than the norm of u times the norm of v, uh, uh, up to some constant. Of course, we have to have this constant c, right? So, my question is, uh, do we have an idea how to do this? Any ideas? Of course, here we have only one tool to prove those kind of inequality. What is it? The only tool that we have. The only tool that we have is holder inequality, right? So we're gonna use holder inequality. Um, so I have the integral from zero to one of sinus of x over four, u prime v is smaller than integral from zero to one uh, of uh, sinus of x over four, u prime square, one half, integral from zero to one of v square, one half. Okay, so this is holder, right? All right, so um, so now, so now I, I'm gonna combine sinus over four um, with u prime. Then I apply holder inequality, right? So so, I, I, so so this is will be my f, and this will be my g. So this is f square, and this is g square, right? So I mean I I combine the sinus with u prime. And then, um, and then, um, and then I leave the v alone. Um, so then I have the L two norm of sinus x over four of u prime, and then v prime, v square, right? So the next step that I want to, so the, so this is holder, and I want to have something like this, meaning that we need to show that this guy of u is is smaller than this u, right? And this v is bigger than this v. All right, so, so I explain again. Here I have sinus over four u prime. I use holder inequality. So this is f and v will be g, right? So then I have the integral from zero to one of sinus of x over four u prime square, which is f square. And here I have g square, all right? But my goal is that I want to show that this guy is smaller than um, the u norm times the v norm, all right? So how do I do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that 
the guy associated to you is smaller than the S01 norm of you and the L2 norm of V will be smaller than the S01 norm of V. So proof, uh, the integral from zero to one of sinus of X over four, U prime square, one half is smaller than U S01. So how, how do I prove this inequality? No? Okay. Um, so this is going to be equivalent with what? Sinus of x over four u prime square one half smaller than integral from zero to one of u prime square one half. Right, so I write out a norm of u um, in S01 norm. So what I want to prove is sinus of x over four u prime. This is u prime square is going to be smaller than u prime square. So how can I prove that? No? Okay, so, so, so look, here I have sinus of x over four and here I have u prime on both sides, right? So how can I size, how can I borrow sinus of x over four? So what can I borrow for sinus of x over four? Right, so this is going to be sinus of x over four square u prime square. So how can I borrow this guy? So sinus of x is smaller than one, right? So which means that this is smaller than one over 16 u prime square. All right, so now if I integrate, this is smaller than u prime square, right? So which means that when I integrate both sides, I have sinus of x over four u prime square, one half, and this is smaller than integral from zero to one of u prime square, one half. All right, it's good. I explain again. So first I apply the whole inequality. So the first guy, I combine that with u prime. And the second guy, I call it, um, uh, I leave it alone. So then when I combine them, uh, I can use whole rate inequality and I have sinus of x over four u prime square, which is f square. And then v, I'm gonna have v square, all right? So, because here I have a term of u and here I have a term of v, so I'm gonna bow u by u and v by v, all right? How do I do that? I'm gonna show that the integral from zero to one of x um, uh, over sinus x for u prime square, um, one half is smaller than u, uh, the, the uh, s zero one norm. And then, so I observe that the s zero one norm of u will be the integral from zero to one of u prime square, one half, all right? Now, now um, this guy, has the sinus and the sinus is smaller than one. So this is trivial. Sinus of x over four u prime will be sinus of x over four square u prime. And this is smaller than one over 16 u prime because sinus smaller than one sinus over four square will be smaller than one over 16. So this is smaller than u prime. So finally, I have this inequality. So I'm, I'm done with this. The first inequality and the second inequality is even easier. So I want to show that this is smaller than S01 norm and this is uh, integral from zero to one of V prime square one half. How do I show that? Right, after I borrow this term, I'm gonna borrow this term. This term means that the L2 norm of V is smaller than the S01 norm of V and which is this one. How do I, how do I borrow that? So I don't have to borrow that because, because this is superlab embedding theorem, right? Superlab embedding. Right, so the L2 norm is smaller than S01 norm, all right? So in general, this guy is smaller than this guy, and this guy is smaller than this guy. So finally, U prime V is going to be smaller than U. S01 norm 
time v is zero one oh. All right, and and and, uh, and and we are done. Right. So basically, we check that this is bilinear. Uh, this bilinear form is um is is basically uh, coercive and bounded. So then, by Laxmin gram, Laxmin gram, uh, you have there is a unique solution. Unique solution. to this equation, u prime v prime sine s of x over four, u prime v, uv, and this is equal to integral from fv, right? So by Lakshmi gram, there's a unique solution for this guy to this weak form, right? So, So by Lakshmi gram, by Lakshmi gram, there is a unique solution to this um, um, to this equation, um, to this weak form, right? And the solution is u. How do I find u? By Lakshmi gram, I know that there is a, a unique solution to this equation. My task is to find u. How do I find u? So I find u by so we know, we know that there is a unique solution, right? U to the equation, equation one. All right, so how do we, how do we find U. Right, so we know that there is one solution for this weak form, all right? But how can we find this weak uh, solution? We find it by finite element method, right? By finite element method. All right, so, so now what we do is the same thing with before, right? So we're gonna approximate, approximate, uh, the infinite, the infinite dimension space is zero one by HS. All right. So you want to approximate the infinite dimension space is zero one by HS, in which HS will be um, the space of piecewise linear function. Piece wise linear function on the mesh um, zero will be x zero and this is smaller than x one which is h or x two which is two h and then you have x n plus one to be one right whose uh, boundaries are zero. Right, so so again, we're we gonna repeat what we did for for the, the previous um, uh, equation, right? So you're gonna approach, so, so from this time on, there's nothing. So this is x0, and this is x1, and this is x2, and this is x3, and the mesh size will be h, right? And this is xn plus one will be one. And this is xn, right? So the mesh size will be h, right? So you're gonna approximate that by piecewise linear function. And then this is like this, right? So so what we do is that, okay, we're gonna approximate um, exactly in the previous, uh, the, ma the, the manner that we did in uh, the previous exercises, uh, the previous example, uh, that we approximate the infinite um, dimensional space S01 by HS, um, in which HS is a space of piecewise linear functions on uh, the mesh, which is like this, right? So you're gonna have X0 is zero. The size is H, so this is 
So they are edge, right? So this is edge and this is edge and this is also edge, right? So we are not approximate of infinite dimension by first we, first we design, they divide this interval into a mesh um, of x0, x1, x2, x3. And I consider all of the uh, piecewise linear function, uh, which has zero added to boundary, but they connect all of the uh, all of the discrete point, all right? Um, so, so, um, so then, then, so the dimension of, so who re remember, um, what is the dimension of this space? So what is the dimension of the space of piecewise linear function, which is all your homework, right? What is the dimension of this space? We said that this is a finite dimension. What is the dimension of this space? Yes, Sura? Um, one over h. One, yes, so this is n, right? The dimension is n, okay? So, uh, so why is it? Uh, so this is according to Sura. Right, so so the dimension of this space is n. Why? Because you have p one, p two, p n. Right. So those functions. So this is but the basis. The basis, the dimension is n, meaning that you have uh, the basis has n uh, vector. Right. So so this is x zero, x one, x two, x n, and x n plus one. Right, so the dimension. So, so, so to remember this basis, this is very easy, right? So you you just pick up this x i. This is x i minus one, and this is x i plus one, and you draw uh, and you draw a hat, right? So, so this is the function. So this is every. This is so this is phi i, and this is one. Right, so. To remember this basis, this is very easy. You have endpoint. So we have endpoint. Endpoints. Um, X1 to Xn. Phi i will be a hat at the point. So we have n, so we have n functions, right? So, so to remember this basis, this is very simple. So you pick, um, so you have n point x one to x n, right? So, so we 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 don't consider um, x zero, x n plus one because they're zero on boundary, right? So we don't consider the two boundaries because the functions are uh, zero on the boundary. We don't care. So we care only the interior point. So the interior points are x1 to xn. So, so you just pick one xi, right? So I pick this xi, and then I, I draw a hat. And I draw a hat, and this is the basis, all right? So then all of the function, all of the v, all of the v in HS can be written uh, v will be the sum when i is going from one to n of v x i phi i x, right? So this is how you express those points. So if you if you have a v in edges, then this v can be written as v x. So this is the coefficient. Remember that this is the coefficient that we computed, right? So v x will be v x i times phi i x, right? So, so this is the coefficient that we, um, we computed in the, in the homework. So, so the coefficient alpha i will be v x i, right? So then this is a linear combination of all of the points, uh, right? So, so now we're coming back to, uh, we're coming back, coming back to the equation that we want to solve, right? So uh, the equation that we want to solve is the following. So you, you have, we, we have, the finite um, solution, right? So you have interval from zero to one of u h v prime p 
plus integral from zero to one of sine s of x over four u prime of h v plus integral from zero to one of u h v and this is integral from zero on f v right so now we have to uh, solve this u h so someone remember how uh, we solve for this uh, u h right so this is true for all of the v in h s so the, the only difference between this example and the previous and the example that we consider in the previous class is this red term, right? But this red term doesn't make any sense, doesn't contribute anything. Um, so how can I solve the final element uh, solution UH? So I'm gonna solve it the following way. All right, so we we write UH as the sum of ci times phi i x. All right, so, so in this class, I don't uh, focus on the numerical code, um, um, but if I'm teaching you the, 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 the class of finite element analysis, then, then I, I'm gonna ask you to do the code, but this is a functional analysis class, so you don't have to do co the code, but rather you have to understand the, the functional analysis, um, the functional analysis uh, uh, foundation of all of the codes that you implement. Because if you don't understand the functional analysis um, foundations of all of this stuff, um, so when you do you write paper, there may be things that goes goes wrong. All right. So so now what I do is okay. I gonna I gonna expand US onto this basis, and we need to find the, those CI. All right, so if we find this CI, if we have all of the CI, then this is fine, okay? Um, right. All right, so, um, so, now, so now I'm gonna plug everything into the equation. Um, so, so first I have this U prime uh, H, so this gives me the sum when I is going from one to N of CI phi I, V prime, and I have to take the derivative because u prime of x will be the sum when i is going from one to n of c i of phi i prime of x. I, right? So I explain again. So because u h belongs to this finite dimensional space, I can write u h in terms of the sum of c i phi i. So u h prime will be the sum when i is going from one to n of c i phi i prime x. All right? So now I want to find this CI. I plug this guy into the equation. So the US will be the sum when I is going from one to n of CI phi I prime, right? V prime. So the second guy, I, I gonna do the same. I gonna have sine s of x over four. The sum when I is going from one to n of CI phi I prime V. And then I have the integral from zero to one of I is going from one to n of CI phi i prime v, and this is going to be integral from zero to one of fv, right? Okay, so I write down all of this um, uh, I write down all of the uh, um, in, ter in terms of the basis. So this is the, the linear sum, and I can, because this is linear sum, I can take the derivative. After I take the derivative, I plug it back to the equation. So I have this guy, so this is uh prime, uh, this is uh prime this is uh there's no derivative sorry this is uh all right so who's re who remembers uh, what is the next step so i want to have a matrix equation right so i remember that this was the idea of surap in the previous lecture so we want to have a matrix equation to have a matrix equation So how do I get this matrix equation? Well, I mean, everything is explicit except that all of the CI, right? So what I do is I replace, so I'm gonna copy again this equation and I'm gonna explain. All 
Now V prime Right, so this is true for all of the V in HS, right? So this is the equation that I want. Uh, I have, and I want a, a matrix equation. Right, so I'm gonna to replace V by V1 to VN. Right? So when I replace V by V1, so when I replace V by V1, I have the sum when I is going from one to N, of um, the integral from zero to, uh, of ci times integral from zero to one of phi i prime um, times uh, phi one prime. All right, and this is the sinus of x over four. I oh, know uh, I'm gonna pull the ci out. So this is going to be the ci integral from zero to one of sinus of x over four, um, phi i prime phi one, plus the integral from zero to one, uh, sorry, plus the sum when i is going from one to infinity of ci, integral from zero to one of phi i phi one, and this is integral f phi one. Right? Sorry. All right, so, so what I do is that, okay, I replace first, I replace phi one here, all right? So when I replace phi one, I have the sum of ci, the sum of ci is sum of ci, right? And I have all of those coefficients, all right? So, so, so then I have, um, then at the end of the day, so this guy, this guy is, and this guy, they are, Computable, right? So then, I, and this is also computable because f is given and v1 is given. So I call this guy v1, and the sum of the three guys here, I call it ci times a1i, and it's equal to b1, right? Right? So in which a1i will be the integral from zero to one of phi i prime phi one prime. So this is the term, and this is the term sinus of x over four um, times phi i prime phi one, right, plus this guy. All right, so when I plug phi one into it, I get one term, one term, one term, and all of these guys associated with this ci. So I put the ci's outside, um, I call the other term a1. So a1i is, is this guy, and this is computed, computable, so this is given. So this is given, and this is also given. All right, so finally, when I do this n time, I'm gonna have a system of the type b1, uh, the sum of i is going from one to n of ci, a2i is b2, and then ci, a, n, i, and this is bn. And you solve this matrix equation and then you find c1 to cn, all right? So basically this is how you solve, um, solve uh, 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 value value problems using finite element method. And the key here is the Lux-Mingram theorem, right? So if you, you try to solve an elliptic equation in which uh, the billion form is not coercive or, or, non, um, is, or not bounded, then this is not, uh, uh, then of course um, you cannot solve it. And you have to think of something, uh, you have to have a clever idea to overcome the difficulty. All right? So a few words about uh, the exam. So for the exam, each of you will have 10 minutes, but I'm gonna interrupt you and I ask a lot of questions, all right? So be prepared. Because, because you have 10 minutes, but because I ask you questions, that can last for more than um, 
10 minutes. This could be 12 or 15 minutes, all right? So, so I want to check your understanding of uh, functional analysis. And, and again, I emphasize on the fact that this class is not to prepare you the knowledge because the knowledge is immense. The class, this class is to prepare you with uh, the intuition. Once you understand, so I keep repeating that, okay, for um, all of these things, as long as you have the intuition, everything will be fine. You can create new knowledge, but if you don't understand the intuition, then even if you remember all of the theorems and proofs, then it won't have you in your future career, all right? So, so I keep repeating that this is the intuition. So, so my advice to you for the final exam is that you take this as a chance to, um, to allow me to help you with um, um, improving the intuition of you on the subject, all right? And, and be prepared because I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions and, um, and your friends are also allowed to ask you questions. I mean, everyone is encouraged to, to ask questions because, uh, because the discussion is open, all right? Any other questions? Uh, so if there's no questions, we can stop here and see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you.